The way that we measure the change in enthalpy is using something called coffee cup calorimetry. The reason it's called coffee cup calorimetry is because it happens at constant pressure. And so the equipment that we can use can be much simpler. We use two nested styrofoam cups and we make sure that there's two of them to try and insulate it a little better. We put a lid on the cups to try and hold as much heat inside as possible. We have something that can stir it so that the water is a uniform temperature and a thermometer to measure the temperature change. And again, this does have to be done at constant pressure and it works the best in aqueous solution. And because it's at constant pressure, that means it can be open to the atmosphere. We do use styrofoam cups as was stated. And when we do our calculations, because it's very hard to measure the chemical reaction, it would have to be down at the molecular scale to measure the reaction that was happening between our molecules. That's very difficult, but it is pretty easy to measure the water that is surrounding that chemical reaction. So when we're doing coffee cup calorimetry, we are measuring the heat of the solution and calculating the reaction. And we can do this because we know that the heat that the solution absorbs is coming from that chemical reaction. And that's why we have a negative sign in front. So we measure the mass of the solution. We either calculate or use the specific heat of the solution and measure the change in temperature. Typically, if no values are given to you, you can assume that the heat, the specific heat of the solution is that of water. If it is given to you, then you want to use that specific heat for the solution. Once we have calculated the heat of the reaction, that is exactly equal to the enthalpy of the reaction. Frequently, because this is an extensive property, it will be reported as the delta H per mole. So all we have to do in order to calculate that is take the heat of the reaction, and you'll frequently see reaction abbreviated RxN. So the enthalpy of the reaction, and we divide by the number of moles that we used of the substance in our chemical reaction. So that will give us the enthalpy per mole because it is an extensive property. Let's do an example. So let's say that we have solid magnesium and we are dissolving it in hydrochloric acid to make magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. So we're told that we have 0.158 grams of magnesium and we have 100 milliliters of solution and a temperature change. Well, because we have 100 milliliters of solution, remember that we are trying to find the heat of our solution. Uh, so another abbreviation I frequently use is SOLN to represent solution. It is the mass of the solution times the specific heat times the change in temperature. So we do need to calculate the mass. We're given volume, but we want the mass. So because this happens in water, the vast majority of our solution is water, we are going to make an assumption that the density of our solution is the density of water. And again, this is an assumption. Most of the time, it is a very valid assumption. But if you are given a density, then uh, you should use a density if it's given. Because we're assuming it's water, it's one gram per milliliter. 
which means that we have 100 grams of solution. Now we can calculate the heat of our solution. 100 grams. We are not given a specific heat, so we are going to assume the specific heat is water. And we are given a change in temperature. So our final temperature of the solution is 32.8 degrees Celsius. And the initial temperature was 25.6 degrees Celsius. So the heat of our solution is 3.0 times 10 to the third joules. And so our final temperature was higher than our initial temperature. We end up with a positive value for the heat of the solution. It's absorbing heat. If we want to find the heat of the reaction, again, I'm using that abbreviation RxN, it is the opposite of the heat of the solution because whatever the reaction, whatever heat the reaction is producing, the solution is absorbing. The solution is our surrounding. So because we have a positive 3.0 times 10 to the third, it changes the sign to a negative for the reaction. So our heat of the reaction is negative 3.0 times 10 to the third joule. Now if we want to find the delta H, this is delta H, but we want to put it in terms of moles, we will have to use the grams of the magnesium that produced this amount of heat. We divide by our molar mass off the periodic table. And we can see that we had a very small amount of moles, 6.499 times 10 to the negative third moles of magnesium to produce this much heat. So to find our delta H of the reaction per mole, we take our negative 3.0 times 10 to the third joules, divide by the amount of moles that produce that heat. And we get a number that is more meaningful in, to compare or to use in a future experiment. So negative 4.6 times 10 to the fifth joules per mole of magnesium for this chemical reaction. Now joules are pretty small. And so we do usually end up with pretty large numbers. Here's a problem for you to try. We're going to look at zinc dissolving in hydrochloric acid. So here's the information. See if you can figure out what our enthalpy of the reaction per mole of zinc is. Pause the video to determine your answer. I am given the grams of zinc. So right off the bat, I'm going to determine the moles. We're not going to use it until later, but we'll have the number when we need it. So off the periodic table, I look up the molar mass of zinc. And we see that we have 0.00157. Five moles of zinc. We are also given a volume of our solution and a density. So we are going to calculate the mass. So if we have 50 milliliters, we're going to use the density. And this is just the density of water to find that we have 50 grams of our solution. Now we can find 
the heat of the solution, which is the mass of the solution times the specific heat times our change in temperature. So our mass was the 50 grams. The specific heat is given, which is the specific heat of water. times our change in temperature. So our final temperature was the 23.7 degrees Celsius. Our initial temperature was 22.5 degrees Celsius. And we can see that the heat of our solution is equal to 250.8 joules. Now to find the heat of the reaction, it is equal to the opposite of the heat of the solution because the reaction, the solution is absorbing any heat the reaction is giving off. So we put a negative in front of our 250.8 joule and that is the heat of our reaction. That is also the enthalpy for this particular condition. If we want to find the enthalpy of the reaction per mole of our zinc, we're going to take that negative 250.8 joule and divide by the moles of zinc that we found originally, 0 0.001575 moles. And we see that we get negative 159,000 joules. So because this is such a large number, frequently you will see it reported as kilojoules. And so in that case, when we convert it to kilojoules, we get negative 159 kilojoules per mole of zinc, which is a lot easier number to handle. So frequently you'll see these values in kilojoules.